So to get us started, we're going to ask Holly and her client, Kathy Nelson, to kick us off. Holly, go ahead. Hi, everyone. I am so glad to be here today. It's super exciting. Um, my name is Holly Corbett. My business is Capture Photos, and I am super excited to introduce a familiar face to so many of you, um, Kathy Nelson, who is our fearless leader of the photo managers and the founder. Um, and I started working together um, at the beginning of this year to get her, so at the beginning of 2023, to get her digital photos organized. Um, as professional photo managers, we try try really hard to practice what we preach, but like many of you, we get busy. And so Kathy made the commitment this year to herself to do that, um, and it's been so much fun working with her. So I'd like to introduce to you Kathy Nelson. Thank you. Well, yeah. hi, everybody. <laughs> uh, excited to be here for this uh, opportunity to share why everybody needs a photo manager, including the person who started the photo managers. Yeah, good, good. All right. So first question, Kathy, um, like often happens with our clients, life events often spur us into action. And that kind of happened for you this year. So tell us what motivated you to get help and to get help now. Yeah, so I, you know, it's over the years as I've helped uh, clients and, and then watched many people start really successful businesses, helping others get their photos life in order. I became like many people. I'm busy right? I've been busy growing the photo managers and managing life and dealing with family and kids and taking, you know, thousands and thousands of photos, just like everybody else does with my phone and my camera and things. And then my son uh, got engaged to get married. They got married on Labor Day. And I have always dreamed of the video montage I wanted to put together of him, of him as a little boy growing up and then her as a little girl growing up and then them meeting and the music and the whole thing that makes you weep through the whole process. And, uh, and I looked at my photo mess and I thought, I'm never going to get to that. Like, how am I going to get that video, get those photos together in any way that I'll be ready in time for Labor Day for their wedding? And so I thought, you know what, I'm going to practice what we preach. I'm going to hire a photo organizer. And, uh, I, I mean, there's so many I could have chosen, I know of, but Holly, I knew it I worked uh, with digital photos and I gave her a call and said, would you charge me full price and treat me like a full client. And she said, absolutely. And, and that was the process. Especially the charging full price part. I was happy mm -hmm. to do that for you, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't want any discounts. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your that story. Um, so we've known each other through the photo managers for quite a long time, um, but we haven't spent a lot of time personally and in our personal lives together. Did you have any concerns about handing over your lifetime of memories to someone that you don't know really that well? Trust is super important in our business. So you could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it, tr it really is really important. And I think um, I did have a moment. I mean, I, I trusted Holly. I trust anybody, I mean, most of the people in our organization, because it takes a person with a real heart to want to do this for a living. I mean, it's very, I don't think most people sign up to help other people with their photos if they're not curious about people, enjoy hearing people's stories, enjoy the process of looking at people's photos. But I did have a little bit of anxiety thinking, Holly's going to see you know, those photos of me with my family with, you know, waking up on Christmas morning with your hair in a million different directions. And, uh, you know, those like horrible photos that nobody has seen, but, and I would not show anybody and all of that. So I did have a little twinge of that, but then I realized, but that's what she sees with everybody. Cause we're all human beings. And I'm sure every one of us have the photos of ourselves we don't like. And, and so I got over that pretty quickly. Yeah. hundred percent on that for sure. Yeah. And there weren't even anyone, any bad ones in there. It was fun. It was really fun. Um, you know, a lot about photo management. You've written books about it. Was there anything that surprised you about the process of working with a photo manager? What was really helpful for me, and I think poor Holly has to deal with that, is that because I know almost enough to be dangerous, but not enough to be really doing my own photos, right? So I would say, well, what about this program? And oh, I just met with this really neat new company, because a lot of companies will come to me with their products. So I get to sit here and and see all the new companies and products that are getting launched. And I am an optimist by nature, I think. So I think everybody's new product is a really great idea. And you know, I get really excited. And then Holly had to kind of keep refocusing me back to what was my end goal like Kathy like one system you know you're going to you want to do this for yourself moving forward you really need to pick one system and this is and I eventually I realized that I needed to rely on Holly's expertise because she's actually doing it every day for a living and I'm not I'm more exposed to all the other things that are happening so that was really 
really helpful to kind of turn over that, like let Holly do the heavy thinking for me and not me try to think so much about it all the time. And it came up again recently when we talked about to get ready for this call, I kind of got a new shiny object which is in my vision. And she was like, Kathy, remember our conversation? You know, you, you don't want to take your really beautiful organized photo collection right now and go put it all in that new shiny object. So that was really helpful to kind of remind me of like what the overall goal is and just help me stay accountable to that. Yeah, that's so common though. It's really common with our clients because there are so many new and shiny things out there. And so staying focused is a is a good is a good thing. And you did a good job. After we kind of went went down the process, you did a really good job with that. <laughs> and I've got my she told me to get a new computer. We were I was embarrassed at how old the operating system is. And I still I did buy it a week ago and I am almost ready to set it up on my own, which uh which I've been watching some YouTube video, getting everything off this old computer. But that was helpful too, almost like kind of permission to spend the money. Like, Kathy, what are you doing with that? You know, yeah, it, you should upgrade your- up. I hope it was nicer than that about it. It was very nice. Yes, yes, yes. And it took me a while though. I'm probably like a lot of people though. She told me yeah. that in like uh, March and uh, and it's I've carried it back and forth to the office and still haven't taken it out of the box yet. So, you know, I mean, I don't know if anybody has issues like that. I myself can be like that, uh, taking yeah. my time and wanting to do yeah. it right. Yeah, but, and we can organize digital photos on on many, many systems. We could have made the old one work, um, but the the goals that you wanted to accomplish were better accomplished with a newer system and that kind of yeah. thing. So so I want to say that I didn't tell you to buy it, maybe, but <laughs> no, no, I said, this, this is what you could do with a new system, and this is what we can do with the old system. And you just said, you know what, it's time to do with the new system. So yeah, for sure. Good, good, good. All right. So with digital photos, the project is never really complete because there's always more organizing that can be done. Like with, well, and this is with printed photos. There's there's always more that you can do. You can be more organized. You can put more information in, all the kinds of things. And you're always adding to your collection with digital photos. So Kathy, even though I know that we're still working on some different things and you're still working on some different things, how has this project impacted your family so far? Yeah. Well, first of all, the video montage was amazing. It was a beautiful, uh, it was, I've, I've got great pictures of my son who knows what I do for a living. And so he's made a lot of video montages. So I really, uh, I, I had to take that, get, you know, up a notch and he, I've got pictures of him and Kate, cry, she's crying and it was really, it was what I wanted. Uh, and I know it'll be something that we'll be able to look back. And it's just from, as a parent, I think watching your child go from little and you know, uh, taking first steps to first days of school to this moment when he's marrying somebody who he deeply loves and obviously deeply loves him. That was just a great, uh, ex great moment. And I think, um, so that's how it's impacted my family. And the fact that I can, uh, I just learned from uh, one of our Save Your Photos course classes about putting the widgets on your phone. And so now I have my widget with like on my phone with my photos. And, and it's amazing to see all the photos that uh, that I have in my collection now that are organized that are named and stuff. And so my, my uh, I'm interacting more with my photos in a way than I ever was, which was really, it's wonderful. And uh, it's something I want to keep doing. Yeah. I love that. And I love that what we were able to do for you is we were able to isolate Josh's photos in yeah. when we were organizing. And so you could just go to that folder and you could see all of Josh's photos. So when you had to create that video montage, um, you could go and say, okay, I love this one and this one and this one and this one. And, and you also one. did Josh and Kate. So you had found yep. all my photos. Yep, we did Josh and, Kate one. Yep. Josh and Kate, which I didn't know was, would be that easy to do. Yep. Yeah. 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 So the wonders of technology. Awesome. Good. Well, thank you, Kathy, for, for sharing today. Good. And I hope everybody realizes that, that we're all busy. And so not, hopefully this me admitting as the founder, you know, for a long time, I had imposter syndrome, feeling like I could never be the person that would need somebody, but that's silly. So whoever you are, whatever work stage of life you are, it's okay to get somebody else to help you with this. Cause it's so important. I think it's of all the things that we do in our lives. It's the one things you, you'll never regret, right. Is having those photos. Yeah. Yeah. accessible to you in a way to share. So thank you, Holly. Really appreciate yeah, I love working with you, Kathy. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Holly and Kathy. That was fantastic. And I actually got to see that video, Holly. It was amazing. It made me cry too. And I don't, you know, even know her. So um, I know. Just, just Doug, clear, I didn't do the video. I'm not taking credit for that. Oh, the, no. The the pictures. Together, I did that the pictures? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, but it was great. The pictures were great. Um, all right, so coming up next, we have um, Lita Bunting, who is our professional photo manager, and her client, Stacy. 
Hi, everybody. My name's Lita, and I am with Zimka Creations. And I'm really excited to introduce my client, Stacy. I met Stacy about five and a half years ago when she asked me to organize her digital photo collection. And then about a year after I had turned over her digital collection, she approached me and said, I need help with my books. Can you help <laughs> make year and review books for my family? And so the very first book um, that I created for her was in 2019, and it was their 2005 year in review book. And I'm really happy to say that we are caught up. Um, so in January, I'll start designing the 2023 book. Um, but some years we've had two volumes because we exceed um, the number of pages that we can have. So um, I'm super pleased to be here with Stacy because she loves seeing these books as much as I love designing them. So Stacy, thank you for being here and sharing your photo book journey with our curious audience. Um, I also have a series of questions for you. Um, so my first question will be, what motivated you to get your family's photos into books? I, I, there were multiple reasons, but I would say the biggest thing was we were moving, we were building a new house. And so I was clearing the clutter and getting rid of things and trying to organize as we go. And I actually consider myself to be highly organized and usually pretty efficient. Um, I'm also creative. And so I kept telling myself, you know, as I go through, I should just put these in the computer and get them organized. And then I found them on flash drives and CDs and didn't even have a CD player anymore. And I found actual photographs and albums. So I had pictures everywhere and on all different types of uh, media. And I just got completely overwhelmed and I'm not a super high tech person. And so just the thought of taking everything that I had um, and organizing it just was way too overwhelming for me, especially with three little kids and moving and building a house and then having a job as an interior designer. So, um, you know, I put it out to a couple of friends um, and the area that we were moving, Lita actually lives like two blocks from me. And so um, a mutual friend kind of introduced us and gave me the information for Lita. And it's been wonderful. It's been fantastic. It's it's been a journey. I, I think yes. I know more about your kids than I know about my own. Um, <laughs> so when it comes to all the books that we've done together, I think I did a count the other day and we're at like 30 books over the past, you know, since 2005 to now. Um, when we started this process and I was looking at your collection, I had to choose the photos that would be going into these books. Did you have any concerns about just giving me full reign. And if you did have any concerns about, you know, how did you kind of resolve those concerns? Yeah, I would say I really did not have any concerns because I know you and I were introduced and, you know, I kind of cold called you. Um, I just knew that I needed help and I knew that this was going to be such a gift. I lost my dad at a young age and I look back and have very few photos. So to me, it was so important that I be able to pass these photos on um, to my own kids and hopefully someday their kids. And I also think that as my kids get older, they're all teenagers now, everybody tends to forget details of places that we went to and sports they participated in maybe, or just different, you know, things that we have um, done over the years. And it was just so important that we capture those in a place where they would always be able to go back to and refer to also, I think as a mom, maybe some of you, you would say the same. I feel like I'm always the one taking the picture and I'm not in pictures very often. So it's super fun to look back and have pictures with my kids. And I've been better about asking my husband or other people to take our pictures that I'm in more of them. But it's really nice to look back and be like, oh, yeah, mom was there. She, she did get down on the floor and play games with us or, you know, whatever it was. So um, I did not have any concerns, you know, as Kathy mentioned, I was thinking like, oh, wow, Vita is going to see everything. But I, I was okay with it. It was just so important to me. I love that you you say that and you're like, yes, I do get on the floor and I play with my kids because, yeah. you know, as our kids get older, they're like, mom's so boring. She doesn't do anything. And I'm like, no, it used to be fun. I used to, you know, hang out with you guys. Um, when it came to these books, was there anything that has surprised you about getting the books, going through the whole design process, anything like that? 
Well, I will say I have totally lucked out with Lita. Um, and I mean this, Lita, I feel like you have made this process so easy for me. I literally hand the pictures over and you do your magic. And that is a talent that you have a true gift in being so creative and having the tech skills to put everything together. So I feel like for me, it's been really easy. What's been surprising is just to look back and well, two things. One is I am amazed at how often my family does actually look at these books. We keep them on our coffee table and we have these shelves um, in our family room and the kids and, and my husband and I, and even family, when they come over for parties and things like that, I'm amazed at how often people truly look at these books and enjoy them. Um, and then also it makes me so happy to look back and I feel like we try to, you know, teach our kids to live without regrets and do everything you can and make an experience every day that you possibly can. And I'm so proud as a family to look back and see all the fun things that we've done, you know, and not necessarily like trips and things like that. But, you know, I said to Lita at one point, even during COVID, like we tried to make the best of it for the year that we were home and we had dress up nights for dinner at our kitchen table and just silly stuff. But I'm so proud of that. So when I look at these books, um, it really, it's a gift to my family, but, um, you know, it's just awesome to see them actually using them, actually looking at them and then also chronicling, you know, our events. So. You made me like all emotional with that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So last question, you kind of touched on this, but it is written down. So I'm like, I'm kind of, you know, following my little list because I'm very anal like that, but um, how has this project or how have these books impacted your family? You did mention that your kids pull them off the shelves and they look at it. And my kids used to climb the shelves and pull them down and we had to put them down lower. But um, other than looking at them, do you do you find that, you know, they, they are impacted in a positive way? I, I would say it's all positive things. And I, I think not to repeat myself, but the, the biggest reason why I do this is so that in the future, they always have something to look back, but also to really put my pictures in a safe place. So God forbid there was some event, a flood, a fire, whatever, I would have, you know, I've always told Lita, I would grab my kids, my husband, my dogs, and my photos. Like that's what I would grab in the event of some emergency. And um, hopefully I never have to worry about that. But um, I just feel like our family history being, you know, put in multiple different places on a, on a hard drive, on my computer, you know, having the albums in my phone that I can use for like school projects and things like that with the kids, but then also um, to have these actual, you know, hardcover books. It's just, it's just such a gift. It really is. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. I hope that um, all this information has been helpful to everybody who's listening. Thank you, Stacy, for your time and your insight. Um, really appreciate it. And we will move on to the next person. Thank you, Lisa and Stacy. That was great. We appreciate it. So next up, we have Carrie um, and her client, Kim. A great name, by the way, Kim. Um, and Kim has company, I see as well, which is awesome. Jackson. Yes. Jackson, excellent. Right. Yes. So we will let Carrie and Kim and Jackson talk next. Awesome. All right. Well, Kim, uh, my name is Carrie Kane. I've been a member of the photo managers for um, almost three years. And um, Kim and I have actually never met personally. We, um, she was a referral from a friend of mine. I'm currently in Texas. She lives in Wisconsin um, in my hometown. Um, and so it's kind of an exciting um, experience to be able to be a photo organizer and help people all over the country and all over the world. <laughs> so, you know, the project that we worked on, on together was converting her um, home videos, VHS and camcorder tapes. And so, you know, it's 2023. These videotapes are 25, 30 years old. What prompted you to reach out now and decide to get taken care of and get them digitized? So my son, who's 15 months old, um, my dad had passed away two weeks after I had him. And I just really wanted my son to be able to like see my dad and hear his voice and like see his personality versus just like 
hearing stories and looking at photos, like it, it's a totally different thing hearing his voice and seeing him. So that's really what got everything started. Yeah. Oh, and it's such an emotional um, roller coaster. I mean, watching, seeing somebody in a in a photo is one thing, but then when you can, you know, access a video of that moment in time and hear that person's voice that you haven't heard in how long, seeing yourself all those years ago as well, yeah. um, and probably seeing your son in you at that age. Um, so that's true that it kind of gives us a deeper connection to those moments when we can, uh, for him personally, your son, so that he can um, kind of see your dad for who you saw him yeah so as I said you're in Wisconsin and I'm in Texas um yes. and so we I mean how was I going to convert these tapes for you did you have any hesitation when I said hey drop these in a box and put them in the mail <laughs> so yes definitely um I had actually reached out to people on Facebook and they had all referred me to like all these corporations and stuff and I had read the reviews and some of them still had like chances of losing some of your footage or whatever. And um, Erica, who's a mutual friend of ours, who is really big into photos, I had reached out to her and asked her and she's like, Carrie Kane, 100% is the one that I trust. And I was like, okay, if you trust her, then I'm going to give it a shot. And it's been great. I love that. And you referenced um, when we talked earlier, um, just... I guess the email that I sent was just included, you know, tips for shipping, just to ensure everything that we can to make yeah. sure that they were going to get safely from you to me. Yeah. Um, and I think the other thing we kind of touched on was, you know, what, what good are they doing you sitting on a shelf or in a closet? You want access to these videos. The only way to. That's that the other to thing. Kinda... You had told me that like the longer they're sitting on a shelf, the more they deteriorate. And I didn't realize that until I was watching one of my uncle's footages that was part of the package that we had sent along. And he said, you know, every single time I watch it, because his wife had passed away like 30 years ago or 25 years ago, something like that. Um, that's the only footage that they have of her. And it is slowly getting worse and worse. So yeah. by at least preserving that has been great too. Yes, that is so true. I mean, it is definitely an outdated media and I know you have a VCR so you can watch them, but we can probably agree it's not like the most accessible or convenient way yeah. for you to do that. So, and once the, we, you know, we VCRs, you can't even buy them anymore unless you're stopping at a thrift store or someone else, you know, happens to have one. So yeah. uh, this was a good, good thing. Um, and speaking of deterioration, um, the tapes that Kim sent were, she had VHS tapes, so, so VCR tapes, and then also, um, the tiny little camcorder tapes from her handheld video recorder. So the VHS tapes transferred beautifully. Everything looked amazing. We were so excited. I was sharing them with her throughout the process and, um, making everything worth it. But can you explain what happened when we got started with the camcorder tapes? So I had actually watched all of the footage before sending it because we wanted to like reminisce about my dad and everything. And um, so when I had first looked at it, I was like, oh boy, it's really shaky. And like, like the whole screen was just kind of had like this. Um, the recordings that I sent you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Not, not the actual footage. And so I had messaged her and I was like, I'm really sorry. Like, I know you just finished all of this, but like, I know it didn't look like that. And I just don't know if it like has just been like deteriorating or what. And she looked over it and was able to repair that instantly. And so then we started on the next step of that. And then, and then, uh, then. <laughs> yeah. And, and then after that, we had... <laughs> Then the audio to... wasn't matching up. Yeah. Yeah. So then she had told me, she's like, I can send it out to another vendor that I trust if you're comfortable with that. And I was like, absolutely. Yes. So, so much of what we do as photo managers is trial and error, troubleshooting. You're working with media that is, as we've said, you know, 10, 20, 30 years old. And you're not really, sometimes everything is beautiful and it all works smoothly and it's just A to B, we're finished and we move on to the next. But sometimes that's not how it works. And so 
Um, the great thing about being a member of the photo managers organization is that we, even though a lot of us are in business independently, we have so many resources um, and partners who, you know, do this every day, just like we do and a partner um, who specializes in um, media conversion. And they, mm -hmm. I spoke to them on the phone and they were confident that they could do what I couldn't do with the equipment that I have here. So, um, and we reached a beautiful result and everybody was happy. So it made me feel great to know that I could offer her that, you know, the result that she was looking for. And, um, you know, did you, like you said, you didn't have any hesitations about me shipping it off again yet someplace else. Yeah. Well, and it, at that point it was like, the footage is being deteriorated as time goes on. So I might as well see what we can do before we eventually won't have it. Yeah. Yeah. So we were very happy. That was a, it was a little bit longer process, but um, the end result was amazing. And um, so that was great. I was happy to help you with that. And so was there anything that surprised you, especially again, since we had never met and you have never worked with a photo manager, was there anything that surprised you um, about hiring me or reaching out or, you know, just, just kind of going through the motions of that whole project? Um, the main thing is like the willingness to go the extra mile to like help me preserve my footage of my dad and, um, being able to like crop sections out. Like, um, for instance, my mom's footage is her giving birth to my brother and there's also yeah. footage of like home videos. So all of a sudden you're watching home videos and then you see my brother being born and then back to home Christmas videos. Christmas and then, yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> so she, hey, could you, would you mind cutting that section out for me so that no one else needs to see that in the middle of Christmas morning? <laughs> right. Yeah. So we have a lot of, so yeah, something that is maybe a little bit trickier for you to do at home if it's not something that you do every day. So. Um, yes. And then also um, sending multiple copies of the videos so that you could share them with family. Um, I think you mentioned yeah. your uncle and then your sister getting their own copies of that. Um, Plus you had um, separated some of the footage all the too. Videos like and separating them based on. Yeah. Just based on who's the videos belonged to. Yeah, so that was already back in May. And so just tell us how it feels now that you're finished your family. So it's been really great. My cousin has actually made a montage of my dad, like just short clips. So like if any of us are having a down day or just want to hear his voice or see his sense of humor for like a quick little second, you know, we can just watch that. And then um, she's also making footage of only my dad. So that way we don't have to watch all 25 of these tapes to see a five minute clip of him. So that's been great. And yeah, my that's... sister had sent her footage in to you awesome. to have it also done. And yep. um, now my mom is also going to be sending hers in. And my favorite part is that you had sent me a link so I could access it off of my phone. Like, well, because you send it through my email and I have my email on my phone. And so when I had visited some family in Kenosha, I was talking to them and I was like, wait, I have the clip. So I just pulled it up and I just showed them the small little clip quick. That's awesome. And that, I mean, that is the thing, right? That's being able to access it from where you are and and you know being that it's digital you don't have to watch the entire thing and wait for it to play out you can just kind of skip back and forth and find the piece that you're looking for and then everybody gets to see and share it with them say here I can send you your own copy and then you'll have it to access whenever you like so that's awesome um, I'm so glad that I was able to help you and I'm just so thankful that you were able to trust me and to take care of this for you and I look forward to um, helping your mom when those tapes arrive. I know it takes some time to gather all of that, but I'm so glad that it's um, helping you guys reconnect with your dad and you'll be able to watch them from here on out. Me too. 
I really appreciate it. And it's nice to finally see you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Other than the 10 year old you that was on the video tape, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Thank you so much and for sharing. All right. Thank you, Carrie and Kevin. That was awesome. Um, it was inspiring me to do something with mine now. Um, and last but not least, uh, we have Sandra, uh, who is our photo manager, and her client, Elizabeth. So welcome to both of you. And then if we have time at the end, we'll uh, have time for some questions. So Sandra. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Sandra Williams with Infinity Photo Solutions. I live in Vienna, Virginia. Um, and I'm excited to introduce you to my client, Elizabeth, who is actually my very first photo organizing client back in 2013. So I thought I would share a quick visual of some of what Elizabeth and I accomplished with her photos. And then I'm gonna let Elizabeth share a little bit about her experience working with a photo manager. So give me one second to share my screen. Okay, hopefully you guys can see that visual. Um, these are basically um, just a visual of, of the things that Elizabeth and I did. You can see these top photos are just a sample of the, oops, I'm moving it around, sorry. The, the top photos are just a sample of the many bins that we uh, went through and that she had um, a lot because we she'd accumulated these over many years. Um, we culled and sorted her photos and scanned and organized over 6,000 images. Um, and then ultimately Elizabeth chose to, to gift her children and grandchildren with a small box filled with a curated collection of photos from their lives. So that's what you can see there in the bottom left corner. Um, and um, over the years, we've also um, created several books and projects to help celebrate special occasions in the lives of Elizabeth's family. Um, and then we also set up a share site, which is what you see in the middle there, um, Elizabeth working on her, on her photos. Um, and we set that up so that she could easily share pictures and that, um, with her family and so that those family members could easily access the pictures. Um, so again, that's just a snapshot of what we have done together. Um, so Elizabeth, thank you for joining us. And um, I'm wondering if you could share, um, I didn't discuss this, so I'd like you to share sort of what initially motivated you to seek help with organizing your photos. Yes, I'm Elizabeth Headley and I'm from Ashburn, Virginia, and uh, it's been a treat to hear all of you and the experiences that you've had, and mine too is uh, beyond um, exciting, I would say, that it's gotten done at all. So my motivation, I, I thought I was pretty well organized, and uh, and sometimes I was, or shall I say, from those photos you just saw, uh, and some years I was, but <laughs> certainly not all years and in not all areas. So, but the years accumulated for me, uh, which is a good thing. And uh, let's say something like 70 plus years and the boxes and various files and loose pictures and dusty boxes of family and relative photos were handed down to me. And, um, then let's say that was actually something over 20,000 pictures that were piled together. And then we were moving to a retirement community and uh, that meant downsizing and downsizing means less of everything. And the photos, as my rationalization went, they don't take up much room, but I knew I had to get a handle on this and come up with a plan. So it was all overwhelming and, uh, I think Stacy before and someone else has used the word overwhelming, and I, I it, it is the word that comes to mind, and it's a great descriptive word for the feelings that were involved of thoughts and practical thoughts and thoughts in my head and, and the thoughts in my heart, and that's where the emotion comes in. And so I, I actually found out about a photo organizer, of which I was not aware, through a frame shop. And uh, and that was Sandra. I called her, and now some ten years later, uh, the the process and the and the trust, and that's a big part of it too, clicked, and we are easily viewing and protecting over thirty thousand photos. I breathe a sigh of relief every day that I invested time and dollars into this project and these tasks and and which are now a legacy of note 
and we are leaving this for our family and the work and the benefits continue. It's far from over. So that was my motivation through all of this. Yeah. And I, yeah, I, the way we met was actually very interesting. She, um, as Elizabeth mentioned, she found out about me through a, a framing and a print shop. And I had gone in there, it was very early in my business. And I'd gone to that print shop to uh, uh, get my business cards printed. And when Elizabeth came in and was talking about needing help with her photos, the guy was like, ah, I have somebody to do for you. So, so that was just kind of a coincidence and uh, one that, I know both of us are really glad that it happened because we've we've worked together a lot over the years and become very good friends. So, um, so Elizabeth, could you um, share if there's any, there was anything sort of surprising to you about working with somebody and sort of, you know, the same question, I think some of the other organizers have asked, which is, you know, how did you deal with that, that trust issue? Because, you you know, you're handing over your lifetime of, of memories and photos. Well, I I think, um, honestly, I didn't realize, I I realized the massive extent of the numbers, but I didn't realize all the emotion it would take to go through the upfront organizing before we ever, almost like before we ever began doing it. It was so much thought and intention of thought and intention of purpose that, uh, that was the living through living through all of those things and what you wanted to do and why you wanted to do it and what purpose that served served and and how all of that was was going to come together and who were these people and what about them are you it was that whole pre-organizing upfront organizing that i think ultimately laid it all out Mm -hmm. as to what the work of it involved and uh, we didn't have many videos so it was interesting to hear about the the videos and but making the decisions which photos would you save and which would you not Mm -hmm. and part of that was cost (laughs) and so um but I hadn't thought about those things before so it was the and a deep thinking process that um, was so useful and necessary. And I'm I'm afraid that I would have just stumbled along and started doing before I started thinking the long the long term. So I'm most uh, appreciative of that because all of the action was intentional, intentional, and it involved. Uh, involved decisions decisions and decisions every step along the way and uh, and so I I also found that in in our time apart when I wasn't working directly with you but I spent a lot of time thinking about that and the next steps of organization that would follow uh, and then there were so many changes you know I mean just changes in life we've lived a long time so not only did the different kinds of cameras used and then going from various kinds of cameras to digital to where those were stored and what internet program I had used to have some pictures printed and having them take my pictures and then how you got them off of those to get them back. They were all different. Right. I had yeah. no idea of the complexity of that. And and I have to say that uh finding out that photo managers existed was a great find for me. It was a great (laughs) find for me. Thank you. I can tell all all of you are very well-trained and you've thought about so many things and you know so many things and you have so many things to know and they're all changing. And and I'm I'm computer literate um, in, in many, many ways, but when you don't think about that all the time, it's hard it's hard to know it. I think one other person made that that point as well. So as far as uh, um, how do the how does the friendship and trust development develop uh, we have established, and that's been the gift beside the gift of the photo organ, a really uh, a very nice 
an important friendship, uh, despite our ages. But we've shared a lot because you do end up telling the photo organizer a lot of your personal life that you didn't even realize. But as you look at those pictures, it all comes back. So right. emotion, the words, the time, the memories, the sort of feelings that come with that. And then you and then you move forward. And then it all sort of fits together in a puzzle. So uh, <laughs> the, it yeah, was it was yeah. a byproduct and an unexpected benefit. And uh, and the and it, process was uh, was tiring, and because you're reliving your life and all its segments and in review and then and then asking quite free asking the question of yourself quite frequently as you're spending all this time and doing all this. Who really cares about this project? Does somebody else care as much as I care about this project? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and I think you have to wrestle, wrestle with that at a certain point and and tell yourself, don't be disappointed if they if they aren't. Maybe they will be someday. That has right. not been the case, I'm happy to say, but in the in the doing of it then you're yeah. wondering about that. Well, and you've had family members that, you know, and this happens in every family. There's going to be some that are like, ah, eh, whatever photos, you know, but then there's going to be the family members that really, you know, um, cherish the memories and want to see the history. And then of course, there's the people who, you know, you have grandchildren who are in their twenties and they're busy with their lives and, you know, doing their thing. And, but, you know, give it another 10 or 15, 20 years, and they may be, you know, looking at these pictures thinking, you know, thank you, grandma, for doing this. You know? <laughs> so. Well, I did get a quote from our, our older daughter that we have uh, five grandchildren. The oldest one is 31, almost 32, and, and then we actually have a 12 year old, so 13 year old. She just turned 13. Uh, and both daughters use regularly, and two of the grand adult grandchildren use regularly, and they are very, um, they're very excited when they yeah. do that. And you know so what? They, they're I, using the share site that we set up. Yeah. And so yeah. It's, uh, the, the other part of the pre-planning, then, then came the organizing and those decisions too about how it's going to be categorized. And, um, I, and I, I, don't, I don't think that I've done as well as I could have on that. But on the other hand, I, I, I hadn't thought much about that. And I think you can still change it. So um, for categorizing. Yeah, your photos are ever evolving. So yes, we did sort a lot by person initially, because that's really how you had already started sorting. And also um, you wanted to be able to give those children and grandchildren their photos. So we did most of our sorting by person. Um, and then within those categories, we did it chronologically. So um yeah, but there's always always ways to tweak it and everything. Well, I but appreciate you you sharing this. Aspect. I know we're. Go ahead. I think it was just another aspect of of the whole process. Right. Excuse yeah. me. Well, thank you so much, Elizabeth, for sharing a little bit about your experience. I know that we wanted to have time for questions, so I'm going to pass the mic back over to Kim. That was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Sandra. It was so great to hear your story. We um, we don't have a lot of questions. There's really only one question that hasn't been answered in the chat. But if you have other questions as you're listening, please feel free to drop them in the chat now. Um, but the one question that is still out there is has to do with book designs and whether your books, those of you who make photo books, if your designs are mainly photos and how do you handle the stories and the journaling when you add those to books? I'll go ahead and answer that first and then anybody else can tack on. Um, so each project is a little bit different. Um, some clients want captions, they want their stories written down, they want all the information that goes with it and other clients just want the photos. Um, because the story comes in the photo and, you know, it, they don't necessarily need all the, a lot of words. Um, one thing that I have done is I've sat down with clients and as they're going through their pictures, they're talking and I'm recording, I'm writing down and I'm recording what they're saying so that I can then capture the words that need to go into the book so that they don't have to worry about it because it is a little bit overwhelming to you know, try to have to visualize and think about what you need to say in a book. Um, but it's it's really a personal preference. Um, 
each client wants it a little bit differently. Anybody else want to jump in on that or is that, that feel good? So we have a couple questions about share sites. Um, somebody would like to know, um, Sandra, what share site you used? And then somebody else is just asking us to talk a little more about creating a shared site. So do you want to start with that, Sandra? Sure, sure. Um, I actually uh, helped Elizabeth. We set up um, a site through forever.com. Uh, and so that was in the early years of forever and the early years of me being a photo manager too. Um, and, you know, she's still using it now. The The nice thing about that site and the reason why we chose it is that it's very, uh, um, it's user-friendly. It's also really easy to share your photos. Um, and at the time, there's a lot of places now that have a legacy component, um, you know, to it. Like, you know, I think in, in, uh, in a lot of programs now, you can kind of assign somebody to take over your account when you pass. And so that was something that was very appealing um, to Elizabeth was that this doesn't all go for naught, you know, that it gets, you know, we do all this work. And then when she passes someday, it just kind of lays on a computer somewhere. So she wanted it to be really accessible. Um, so I have continued to use forever with a lot of my clients. There are other options out there. There are people who use um, Smug Mug, um, uh, that's Mylio is another way, but th this just fit exactly what we needed for Elizabeth. So, I can I just talk to share site. Uh, talk, do you have any, Kim? Did you have something? Yeah, you no, go ahead. Go okay. ahead. I was just going to say so, just to think about the process. Um, one of the things that I think is notable with um, the project that Sandra just talked about was that she did all of the organizing first. So, a lot of people want to just jump right straight to systems and start you know, throwing things in a system. And really the more you can do outside of that system to get everything organized and ready, the easier it is when you put it into that system. Sometimes the systems can help you you know, be more organized through some of the tools that they have, but oftentimes um, working and just getting everything consolidated in one place and do a little organizing first is gonna serve you well to do that. So. Great. And that sort of leads to the next question, Sandra. Like, did you sort photos at a dis the physical photos at a distance, or were you both local to each other? Um, so we are we are local to each other. Um, and so we actually Elizabeth wanted to do it together. You know, so I have many clients who actually just hand me the sh the, those bins that you saw, and then we sort. And the way we do that is obviously asking a lot of questions, getting a lot of family history and birth dates and things like that, so we can figure out who's who. Um, but we initially worked together and then I think I finished it on my own because, um, and this is 10 years ago, so you're testing my memory, but, um, <laughs> but just looking, looking at the little visual I made for you, um, I can, you know, there was the little pictures on the table with stickies and stuff. And that was definitely back here in my studio. Um, but I absolutely remember sitting with Elizabeth and doing some of the sorting with her. In fact, just a quick, um, funny story when we were going through the photos, um, I was, you know, pick it, we were both picking up piles and deciding which, which box it went in for the grandchildren and stuff. And I remember picking up a picture and said to her, oh, do you need this? And it was just, it wasn't a really good picture. It was just, um, her daughters were on a telephone. So to me, the most interesting part of the picture was, the, was the long kitchen cord, you know, on the, <laughs> on the, the phone. And Welcome. she said, she, and I was like, oh, do you want to keep this? You know? And she said, oh, absolutely. That is a really, really special photo. And uh, I don't know if you want to share, Elizabeth, what that photo was. It was a photo of our daughters at eight and uh, eight and 14 in Australia, making the one call on Christmas day, the one long distance call on Christmas day in 1977 uh, to their grandparents. And the, the call cost over $250 uh, to make <laughs> that call, which is why there had not been any others. Right. And, uh, and so, and it was taken with whatever issue a, a quality of camera we had at the moment. Yeah. and developed there which didn't where the color didn't always stay 
<laughs> at, yes. at that time. That would and not be true. What struck me about it was after she told me what the story was, like I looked at that photo completely differently. All of a sudden I noticed you know, the girls weren't facing the camera. They were facing each other. And one of them was on the phone. I could see their smiles and they were like glowing. They were so excited. And, and it really, um, for me, it taught me, I think how to be a better photo manager in the sense that, especially if I'm sorting with, with people's photos when they're not with me, um, that I tend to, you know, if a lot of times people want you to call their photos, get rid of that, you know, so we tend to only uh, call like the excess scenery and the really, really blurry photo um, that you can't even see anything because we want our clients to maintain the pictures that are important to them. And, and we can't know all of that, right? Unless we actually have a discussion about every single picture. And that's not always would, the best uh, use of your time. <laughs> when we sorted together and when I could release them to you to sort too, because as you photo organizers know, by that time, she could recognize the baby pictures as the adults that are almost yeah. the adults yeah. Yeah. along the way. I no longer had to identify any of those. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, really any photo or organizer, we get, to, we get to know the the family very well and the pictures. And I always feel like I'm, um, mostly you're dealing with all these at first, the small the babies and toddlers and all this. And then all of a sudden you'll show me a picture of your grandson today. And I'm like, Oh my God, he's all grown up. <laughs> yeah. So, so and, and call by name. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do you have any other questions, Kim? Uh, we only have one other question right now. And that was um, how much people charge for photo books and how you might uh, make that decision. That's the only other question we have right now. So I'll start since I talked about photo books. Um, each book um, costs something different. It's based on the number of photos that start in the collection, how many photos end up in the book, because that then translates to how many pages the book is. And then there's the finishes of the book. There's the super low end type of books, and then there's super high end, and then there's something in between. So uh, it, it's based on multiple factors and it ranges in cost from very little to very much. Um, I, there's no way for me to say how much mm -hmm. a book would cost. Um, so someone else can weigh in. Depended on the kind of book too, the quality, whether you want like a coffee table book or something that's a paperback and yeah, there's a lot of factors that go into that. All right, any last thoughts anyone wants to ask? This has been both delightful and inspiring. Um, it's been the best hour of my day. Anything else anyone wants to add really quickly before we end for the day? I did have a, a summation statement about photo organizers of which I was not aware, as I've mentioned before, but um, the whole experience was very, uh, rewarding and worth every dollar that I spent, whatever the cost. So 10 years, you all can figure it up because you know how that go that goes. But, um, and not only do I get to enjoy it and feel accomplished, but then the benefits keep accruing, not only for me, but for everybody else. And it was really, it wasn't just a pleasant experience. But it was the knowledge that photo organizers as a as a group have uh, that the rest of us benefit from. And um, I don't know that people know that. It was a feel good experience because I was learning things, I was accomplishing things, but I would never have been able to do it without the knowledge and the the sensitivity, uh, that's a part of it too. And I think that's where trust comes with sensitivity. And uh, and time, but time well spent. So uh, I'm fortunate to have, have Sandra, I'm sure who's one of the best, but I think she just is an example of the, the usefulness and the helpfulness of photo organizers. So thank you all. Thank you, Elizabeth. I I want to say as, as you know who started the business started when people my people asked me to help them and then I helped them to have somebody else walk through this journey with you too I mean I've kind of psychologically understood it from the 
person who was doing it for others and then helping others start businesses, but to have somebody care about my family photos and um, you could not even tell, you know, in some ways, uh, the Kahali continuing to encourage me and some some work even around my my the history of the photo managers and the photos that she saw in my collection, put them aside in a special uh, folder and said to me, you know, Kathy, your like that legacy really needs to be told and matters. Just having somebody else tell me that was really is wonderful. So I think kind of like Elizabeth, like you said, the gift keeps on giving. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really great way of positioning. We might have to take that little title and, and use that in our own promotion. But the idea that uh, once your photos are back in your life in a meaningful way that you can have access to, it does keep on giving, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm able to quickly find photos right now. And and I wasn't, I hadn't even thought about that way. So um, there's a great question from Hannah though. Yeah. Who, yeah, I, I, I can gonna, answer quickly on that, but I'll let some yeah, of the go, photo managers. No, go answer. ahead, Kathy. One of one of the questions that just came in was whether managers ever have be, have unhappy clients, and if so, why? Which is a great question. I'll answer just, to, and Kathy? then I'll have the photo managers answer themselves because they may have experiences. I, I've only personally intervened twice as a, and so I right away when I started the organization, I knew we needed a, a strong code of ethics and a certification program because it's so personal, and we really needed to be careful that that clients were trusting when you turn your photos over to somebody that we we have a you know set something in place around that and the two times though that I that I helped intervene was just I needed the client needed a listening ear somebody who could really understand listen differently than maybe the the photo manager was and I think nobody had done anything wrong it was a miscommunication that had happened and both times things came to resolution so that's the only even for me personally, after all these years, you would think if there were unhappy clients, we'd know about it at the photo manager's level and, you know, if they would be in touch with us and they, uh, both times those situations were resolved. That's my experience so far. I'm sure that could change, but, but let, let's let the photo managers themselves experience if they've had clients and if so, why, you know, how they've managed that, because that's the last thing anybody wants is an unhappy client. Yeah. Carrie, go ahead. I was going to actually reiterate exactly what Kathy said. The one time that I had a gentleman who was even the slightest bit unhappy was due to a miscommunication of communication, like the communication style. He was, um, I think, worried. We were we were uh, scanning photos and I was helping him set up uh, his digital library. And we, you know, I was trying to give him as much information as would be helpful to him but he had more questions that it wasn't, we weren't at the right time to answer those questions. And I think he thought I was just gonna like leave him in this lurch. And when I heard a little bit of like panic and concern, I was like, oh, um, we are totally working on this together. I will absolutely walk you through every step of what's coming next. Um, but we're also careful not to give people too much information because that's equally as overwhelming as not having any information. And then once we had that conversation, he's like, okay, okay. So, and we proceeded, wrapped up the project. And I think he was more comfortable with me. I know he was more comfortable with me at the end than even when he started. And his project was very much laid in his lap as his siblings weren't interested in being the photo you know, curator. Um, and then all he could do was sing my praises at the end because he just said, oh, you took care of more than I would have ever imagined or even thought of. So but I think a lot of it is communication. And I, I feel like that kind of- In people, my experience. <laughs> I think you're dead on, Carrie. I think the kind of people that do this work, we really do care. I mean, this is like, usually most of us, photos are our passion. And so we would very- like letting an unhappy client walk out the door, I can't mm -hmm. even imagine. If they're unhappy, right. I'm going to figure out, okay, well, what can I do to fix that? Not because I don't want them to go write a bad Google review or something, right. but because no. I want at the end of the day, them to have a beautiful collection of memories that are going to bring them joy, not look at it and be right. unhappy. So I think you're dead on, Carrie. Even yeah, just agree. with our experience that we had, like, thank God I said something. Otherwise I would have been watching shaky images for the rest oh, of my yeah. life. <laughs> yeah. I love that you it guys would be like a bad haircut. She's like, I should have said something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we took, you know, I was like, no, no, Hey, thank you for telling me I had watched some of the videos back and didn't see what she was seeing. And as far as like the audio not matching up, it's hard to tell that's not in every section of the video. 
But as soon as I watched it, I was like, there's no way this can be the end because that's not comfortable for anyone to watch and definitely not what should happen. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I think, I mean, I love that you guys pointed out that you ran into an issue and that you resolved it because it's, it's, it's not cut and dry. Every project is different. Um, uh, one of the things that I know a lot of us do to try to prevent those miscommunications is creating a, a project plan. So, you know, I do that with my clients yeah. where, uh, you know, that first meeting that we have where I gather all their preferences and everything, I go back to my office and type that all up and send it to them so we can make sure we're all on the same page. Um, but there is that mystery that, you know, Carrie mentioned that in the beginning of the project, sometimes I find my clients want to know like, well, so what are you going to set me, you know, what's the end result going to look like? And sometimes we don't know that right away, you know, like we know we're going to organize your photos and they'll be in this kind of structure, but in terms of like where you're going to choose to put them online, um, that type of thing, some of that, uh, gets, even if you decided it early on, it gets kind of tweaked as you go along, as you learn more about your clients' right. um, needs and wants. Um, but in the well, end, and it's not that different than working with someone in a, a, a different specialized trade. You know, yeah. if your plumber or electrician is giving you all this information that is foreign words to you, you get you think, oh my gosh, what's happening? I don't understand. Yeah. She right. doesn't, you know, you. No, they know what they're doing, but you don't get it. And it's confusing and overwhelming. And you wish you hadn't never even asked the question. And so <laughs> um, we, I think, try to like, you know, you try to buffer it a little and just say, I promise that I will give you all the information you need as you need it. And um, please continue to ask questions, but I will make sure you have everything you need when we're finished. <laughs> Thank you so much to everyone who was on our panel. You were just fantastic.